All right, guys, welcome to the episode of Hoppy Craftsman. I am Chris, and with me is my co-host, Edward Gomez. That's me. Uh, we This is going to be kind of a recap show of the Real and Woody Festival for 2019. Um, we're lucky enough again to go this year as media, which is kind of cool. Um, and we got in with, with what? It was a little right before noon, right? So we had about 15 minutes before noon. Yeah, I or think was it, it was. No, no, one. Yeah, it's VIP started at one, and we got in, I would say, probably about 1240, 1245. So yeah, a little bit of time, which is nice to be able to get talk to some people before, uh, you know. Yeah, we did masses. a we did a recon <laughs> lap to see where everybody was and did a few interviews and then had some strategy going. You know, tried to figure out who was going to yeah. be busy later so we can get them early and talk to everybody. That was kind of fun. It was kind of it was like I think we noticed early on though it felt like there was a lot less people like breweries there. There's actually it felt like there's more vendors almost. Yeah, it seemed like there was a lot of open space. Because it was the same size as it was last year. It was the same place. It was the same, you know, they didn't open one of the walls up, so it was kind of the same area. But it definitely felt like there's less breweries there. Yes. So um, we were kind of like I don't know if it was just us or whatever, and then later on we were talking to people and they said that ideally they want the festival to be less breweries and less outside breweries which makes sense uh so maybe it's, it's you know a local kind of festival which is really cool right yeah but you start having like every person from colorado and california and everywhere else come and hang out it's gonna be just a shit fest so yeah i think one of the goals was to focus on tasting not necessarily trying to hit <laughs> Ch- as many chugging. places yeah <laughs> like i need to go here i need to go here i need to go here it's like well like what we did we hung out at Goldwater and probably tried everything they had right towards the end. So, but then you got a double edged sword in that regards. Cause if you have too few breweries then you're going to have long lines and people are just going to get bitchy about that. Yeah. But hurt. And then try to hit many places anyways, cause they can go to that. Nah, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a big deal to me. I thought it was pretty cool. All the people I really wanted to see were there, which was nice. So I like that. Yeah. I can't think of anybody who wasn't there that stood out missing um i can't really think of anybody yeah no yeah who knows so good good things about the convention like what what was the or well, I, the I'll pros say, yeah the pros what are the pros for this year compared to other years or just in general that you've you saw or well, i think i think the vip really uh alleviated that line congestion of everybody trying to get in at once right i mean that we got there at 12 and there were already people lining up for both general admission and VIP, right? Which yeah, was crazy. Cool. Yeah, I, I was like, when somebody, like, the security guards are telling them, like, okay, well, this line's for VIP, and this this you know path is for general admission. I was like, who the fuck is getting in that line? And then people did. <laughs> I was like, wow, they're dedicated because they're basically gonna wait there an hour and a half at least in that line. Yeah, because in the past, when general admission lets in, especially in like strong beer fest, like it's just like this stampede of people rushing in. And it didn't really seem like that when general admission started. Yeah. It got a little busier and like the predictable lines formed quickly, but there wasn't like this huge wave of people coming in for general admission. And people were trickling in for yeah, like an, up to an hour after general admission. So yeah, that was crazy. Like I like I always thought there'd be like, you know, one or two people coming in here and there, but it was there was a good just trickle of people nonstop. Was, yeah, like I said after a little ways after general admission got in, I was just like Man, the beer fest is, uh, ends at five thirty. Technically, I mean, it ends at six, but five thirty is last call, and so people are like still coming in at like three, and you're like, okay, that's. I mean, I wouldn't if I would pay that much money to get in to a two hour beer festival, but people did. So yeah, I think uh, I think they had more bathrooms open this time than last year. Was it just more bathrooms, or is it that they didn't flood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably it too, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think that whole backside wall right. was closed off. Oh, okay. Where the uh, where that photo booth was this year? Yeah, on that back wall. I think those were closed last year, and I think they were open this year. So, gotcha. I guess I was gonna say like I, I like you know I had to go to the bathroom like a little more than halfway through, and I just I walked right in. I have no issue with. I literally just walked in, went to the bathroom. And there was like three empty stalls next to me, and then walked out. I was like, that's the easiest thing I've ever did compared to Strong Brew Fest. It was. A thousand times easier. And it just makes sense when you have a full bathroom like that, too. You I mean, you don't have people, you know, waiting. Like you have one giant line waiting outside of 50,000 porter potties. Yeah. It just goes faster, right? I mean, you have one line goes into the bathroom and five people can go to the bathroom at once. They come out. It just, I don't know. It just seems like it's faster when you have a real bathroom. <laughs> so 
that's very cool. You know, um, I think the selection was good as far as beer goes. What people brought, there was a lot of sours. Yeah, it was crazy. This probably was more sour than anything, which is weird because I, I thought it'd be a lot, a lot of barrel aged stuff because there's definitely usually is a lot of like heavy 15, 60 percent beers. Yeah. And there were sours all over the place. Like everybody that we went to had a sour, which was awesome. So I was kind of in heaven. I'm yeah, sure. it was a little, <laughs> somebody had some tums after that. I'm sure a lot lighter too. Like you're yeah. talking four percent and under on some of these things, and which is some kind of nice because, I mean, you run into your sixteen percent and thirteen percent, right. but it's it's well, nice it's to have a balance, a little balance of yeah. that. You know, you can get, yeah get some get some real big guys and then go try some little lighter stuff, which is nice. I enjoyed that. Um, we are drinking a beer, by the way. I guess we should talk about that because we're awesome. At yeah, we're good. We're really good at that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, you brought this over, Ed. What is this? This is uh, Flipping Tables by LCB Local Craft Brew. Right? Is that what it is? Yeah. So, well, is that our ba- that our beer. I can't really see. It's really tiny. Yeah, it's a real tiny and rare. Rar. How do you say that? Rar. Yeah. It's got some. Uh, it's like it's is that a, a porpoise or a dolphin. I think it's a narwhal. Ah, oh, no a, horn though. So he's flipping the, flipping a table over. Yes, and then it says uh, on the can, "When East meets West, you get the best of both worlds: East Coast haze, West Coast triple dry hopping. It's so good, it's gonna make you want to flip the table over." Please don't. Well, yeah, because there's a lot of expensive equipment on this yeah. table. I can find another one for you later <laughs> on. If you want. Do that. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. It's. It's definitely got the haze of uh, the hazy beer, and it's got a little bit. I might call it. Excuse me. It's almost like the hop burn. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got like because of the dry hopping. It, yeah, they use a shit ton of hops. I know that. I always feel like when I the dry hopping is really crazy. I can kind of feel it like in my throat, like in my chest almost. You know, it's like yeah. oh, it's, I'm gonna need a tums later or something. But like that's what it feels like with this. Which you know, I don't know if I could drink a ton of these beers. It's it's, it's good. I don't know. It's not super citrusy and juicy, but I don't know. Not it's bad. A, it's a little dark too. Has a little malty. More. Yeah, looks a little maltier than like your traditional hazy. Um, it looks. I'll say. I'll say this. It looks a lot hazier, um, darker. I should say than the OJ that Brent House poured. <laughs> 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 so if you that didn't go there, uh, the Brent House literally had a, a beer on their board and it was just called OJ, and then it had point. It was like zero point one percent, and I was like. What the fuck is that? And then, so if you listen to the uh, the ep- rest of the episode here, we'll go to the interviews. Uh, Hilda actually told us that it's basically just fermented orange juice that they dry hopped. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, well, we should try some of that. And surprisingly, was it awful? It was actually pretty good. I don't know if I drink a ton of it, but yeah, I think a sample or maybe just a taster was probably enough of that. But yeah, I mean, Very maybe it gives them, maybe it gives them ideas on bigger things to do, like towards their Las Frescas line or something like that. Yeah. So I think a lot of people do it for Real Wild and Woody. They have enough time to throw something experimental. And, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Fuck yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was kind of one of the standout beers for sure. I don't think it was like, like, it was, like you said, it was interesting. It was a kind of a cool experience what they did. I didn't say it was probably my, the best tasting beer, you know, one or one that was like, oh, it's really interesting. It was just more, yeah, it was just, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was cool. It's cool experiment. That's yeah, about it. I mean, proof, of, proof of concept. Right, right. Let's try this. Let's see if it works. And it worked to a degree. I'm, I'm sure they didn't have any by the end of the festival. So yeah, people, people drink it. <laughs> but they did bring plenty of beer. So there was a lot of other ones. They actually were the only people I saw that had timed releases all day long. Like it felt like every hour or half hour they were releasing something different. No, oh, were they? I didn't yeah. notice. Like that. everything on the board was there was a time next to everything on the board. So it was pretty interesting. Yeah, it seemed a lot of people did a. Uh, basically half point release mm-hmm. at like three o'clock yeah like a three o'clock one because yeah there was a couple three o'clock going on at once and i think we walked over to the gold water line and we're like yeah no yeah we were well, there I said, I said no you were yeah. you were about ready to stand there i was like mm, not doing that yeah like even before three o'clock that was probably the longest line them yeah so them ren house's line was probably the craziest overall like, it was actually to the booth and then snaking back to the booth like like i saw it at first and i thought it was like i'm like man that line's going into this people on the other side of the convention center's you know booth and then i saw it kept going back towards their booth again so actually they hit like they were literally interrupting two other booths <laughs> one on their side of the convention center and one on the other side's lines because they were so long i think that was for the la frescas too it was later on yeah i think so because 
I mean, they're, yeah. the bottles, I think, attracted people because uh, they use that rainbow yeah. label on those big ass magnums. Which, the magnums. Yeah. We should we should probably probably should have thought about that twice before trying to pour a one ounce or two ounce sample from that big ass bottle. Magnum. So, so either people got really good samples uh, or they didn't get any at all. So we'll see how that goes. We'll have to we'll have to ask we next we see Luke. We'll have to ask him and see with uh, how that turned out. Yeah, Luke. Luke walked through the building with like the nuclear football, and, like he had the, yeah. the case and like a bodyguard with him. Like <laughs> he's gonna get mugged. Uh, yeah. Drunk people, you never know. Yeah, who knows? It's true. So, what are some other beers that you had there that were like, okay, this is this was good. Let's go back for another one. That neonic orange Julius at the shop had. Yeah, that, that was that was that was amazing. probably the best beer I had there. Like it tasted wow. exactly okay. like an orange Julius. It really did too. Like that one. Like it was. Yeah, it was really surprising. It was. It was it definitely. It was a super fitting name because that's what it was. Yeah, and because I mean, I've had. I mean. We, should, we had the freaking treehouse Julius beer, and it wasn't even close to being juice or a Julius like that. I mean, I'm sure it probably wasn't, but or made to be that way. But this beer was. It was literally an orange Julius, and it was surprisingly awesome. So, yeah, I don't know if that's, I don't, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I would say that's definitely on the top five. And then, then uh, Goldwater basically had a cask strength of is basically hot chowder, right? Yeah, it was hop chowder, and we drank that multiple times. Yeah, I think after drinking a few times, it actually I started enjoying it a little bit more. I actually think I like the um, it was an unfiltered peach. I think it was something like that. It was, like, it was basically oh, their yeah. sour peach IPA, which they're releasing in a can too. Yeah, I think that's what they're saying. Yeah, it was that was awesome. I like that a lot. Um, dude, Twelve West had that freaking sacrifices and the scarlet, and the sacrifice they had two sacrifices. One, one actually had cinnamon in it. Yeah, one was just like a vanilla. Right. And then one was like a cinnamon vanilla or something like yeah. that. And those were, ugh, they're amazing. They're so good. Um, the Scarlet was really good. It's another one of those sours. They actually had that in draft, and then they're pouring the the Elma from their bottles, the cuvee, for Dodd. Yeah, I think I had that towards the end. Um, but I mean, those are all solid beers. Like right. those, that cuvee line is kicks ass. And yep, big fan of that. Uh, what was that freaking? So we had that another beer from 8-Bit that was, it wasn't quite a banana split like the one that we had previously at Strong Beer Fest was, but it was still, it was kind of like, because of the cacao nibs and had the banana from the Hefeweizen yeast, and then, you know, it was, uh, that was really good. I like that one a lot, too. Was that, uh, was that one of the Ryan's Recurring Nightmare versions, or was that the uh, Fruity Pebbles one? Because that Fruity no. Pebbles one tasted exactly like Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. Like that was I wanted crazy. My, saturday morning cartoons when i was drinking that beer dude, it was it was really good um yeah that was awesome dude I like that uh you, still getting up to dark sky for that friggin' juice box hero yeah that was such a good beer and like that's funny because i had friends standing in line for uh both frescas and walk up and i was just like listen i literally just walked to dark sky and get those juice box heroes this is literally the same kind of beer that you're getting right now that you're waiting in line for and there's nobody over there and so they all took turns getting out of the line for Ren House and got a beer from Dark Sky and then came back. And I was like, I'm like, that's why not stand in lines. I mean, the frescoes is good and I like it and stuff, but I can go drink five other places while you're waiting in that one line. I guess it does help if you have people with you and kind of do the, like I said, the whole line hopping back and forth. So, but at the same time, I always kind of feel a little bad about that because I don't, I mean, if I was waiting in line and didn't have me to like, hold my spot and i like left to get a beer and came back people would fucking wouldn't let me back in line right yeah <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing dude so i don't know i feel like it's uh, i don't i don't i have a little guilty if i'm in line and i fucking jump out because i got a bunch of people there yeah it just depends on know. what like the time releases you don't want to do that but right i mean everything else and eh, whatever yeah i think there's mm-hmm. not too many it didn't seem too many people ran out early no we kind of everybody kind of like it was, went to the end yeah, so that was really good. Um, any beers that you weren't like a huge fan of in general, like that you had and was like, eh. um, that what was that Grand Canyon one? The oh, whistle, the, the wheat, wheat whistle, or something yeah, like wheat that? whistle or something wheat like whistle? that. Yeah, like I, the Dire Wolf was. Oh. I, I could see where it's along that same line of right, like style or even flavor but that dire wolf is just so that's way better amazing that the, what was the what was the one that you had through that it, was, it wasn't the dire wolf it was the other one uh, uh from grand canyon yeah. it was the 
I don't know. I'll look it up and yeah, look it up. Come it, back to it. I, I just remember that was that was because I got the Dire Wolf and you got that, and we kind of both tried it, and it was like, oh, that's actually really good too. I can drink either one of these. So I don't know. Uh, I think I mean that was yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of that one. I think the other one was the um, Iron Fire. The uh, it was like their barrel aged. Oh yeah, they do it every year. Um, which it's like sixteen percent. It was hot. Like, well, it was super hot. It was hot and smoky. Like there's a ton of smoke in that beer. I, just, I don't know. I just got soy sauce. That's what I taste. It just tastes like soy sauce to yeah, me. It was very meaty. I was like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do it. So yeah, it wasn't. That was definitely one that I wasn't a huge fan of. And then um, the purple nurple. That was the one I had from the, Grand Canyon. That one was really good. That was I liked good that too. One a lot. Yep, that was awesome. Um, yeah, that was, that was about. It was, it was funny because it was basically just stouts. There's a bunch of stouts in that wheat wine. That was like the ones that I wasn't like a huge fan of, which is funny. Is that's usually the the opposite way. So, don't know. Don't know. I'm trying to think if anything else stood out. Uh, oh, you know what? I did not. You know, something we forgot about earlier too is the the the, the, the cons of the convention in general of the fest. Um, the fucking DJ. Oh, that. So. In general, I would say the biggest negative about the festival is the layout. Like, there was a ton of empty space that was just nothing. Right. And then you have this, you had this weird corridor of breweries on each side, and then a giant DJ booth and speakers, like, just blaring. That at the fucking loud, like, you could, that's so loud that you could hear at the other side of the fucking convention center. Yeah. Which is fine if you would have put them in a corner. Right. Or, like, it's just weird. They had, it seems like they had all the breweries and stuff on one half of the area. Yeah. And then they had that, like, I didn't notice, I guess what assume was the VIP area. I didn't see a lot of people in there. Oh, so that was the VIP plus area. Oh, for the food. For the food, right? And then they actually had bathrooms in there, too. So I've known that you got bathrooms and food if you're a VIP plus, I guess. I don't know. Their own private bathroom, I guess. But whatever. We didn't, we didn't even need it. I literally, like I said, I walked to the other bathroom, like, like that went right in so it'd be interesting to see how many vip plus they sold versus yeah. vip um yeah to see those because that seemed like a waste of space and it was dead yeah. center like it was a big amount of space too i mean and i understand like it's funny that we talk about this all the time and it's easy for you know to sit here and fucking pick it apart but you know i mean logistically wise you have to fucking plan for that shit because what happens if they would have done you know the vip plus and they got in the area and they made it smaller and then they fucking sold a fuck ton of tickets, and then we've been jammed in there. Yeah, and then people would complain that it was too small. <laughs> so you can't. I mean, it's so it's hard to freaking. Well, I think just the guesstimate. layout. Like, if you worked from the corners right in, I think you could have a better balance because right. it, again, it seemed like there's no reason to have Dark Sky and Ren House right across from each other. Yeah, like if you know anything about, if you're involved in this industry in Arizona to any degree, you right. know that. Those are two popular breweries. Yeah, but you know, I again, I always wonder how much say that some of the breweries have to where they want to where be. they want to be, and, and, and maybe some want to be next to certain people, which is and, fine if and you want away from other people, kind of thing too. So, which is completely understandable. Like if Dark Sky and Ren House want to be in the same area, put right. them next to each other so their lines go in the same direction. Yeah, true, not that true. their lines run into each other. Right. No. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean. Because, like, look yeah. at Fate. Fate was off in the corner. I didn't even know they were there till close to three quarters end. into yeah. the festival. It's like, oh, look, there's Fate. <laughs> Fate on is the here. Very end of the. Yep. And then you had these. I understand you have to pay for this, but the sponsored locations were bigger than any brewery location, it's, I think. It's like, it was insane. nuts. Yep. So I think, 100%. like, if they would have spread it out a little more and, like, because, like, Goldwater was next to, like, this weird acoustic stage. Yeah, that, that was nobody so, went to because you, well, the first guy was just playing acoustic. He didn't have anything microphones or speakers. He was literally had his guitar and he was singing and the, trying to oversing the fucking DJ across the convention yeah. center. So that's weird, but which is fine. But then they had seats there. Yeah, like people that's, were going to sit down and listen to yeah a beer festival. Like I could understand if you put the sage there and then like surround it with like sit down tables because people were eating and snacking right. and stuff. That makes sense. That yeah. would make sense. And right. then like the rock wall's fine, but you could have stuck that in a corner instead oh, of that should have been way in the corner. Yeah. Because um, it's fucking annoying to have to go around that every fucking time we walk through that side. Yeah. So yeah, I mean because I know a few of the brewers who were across from that DJ booth were like, this is fucking ridiculous. Oh yeah, they were pissed. Yeah. It's like you can't in, you you couldn't even engage people right. in conversation. So it's well, like how do you push your brewery when you just 
Right. I mean, the, boom, boom, the whole boom, point boom, of yeah, being there is to fucking get people to, you know, recognize your brand and understand your brand and you can talk to them, make connections with people. And yeah, you can't we, we couldn't even talk to them where that we literally told them we're like, hey, we want to talk to you guys, but we, we we have to go somewhere else and you guys are fucking busy. So Yeah, we wanted to talk but, to Landon from yeah, PV Pueblo Vita and yeah. we're like, we want to, but there's no way in hell like yeah. we can talk to you without this music just yeah ruining you wouldn't any hear kind of recording. Yep. Yeah, and they, they even have a little back area behind them that had a little, little like, the square back area. We couldn't have even been back there. It still would have been way too loud. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, that kind of ruined a bunch of it. I mean, it actually deterred me away from that area a little bit, too, just because I was like, I didn't want to be over there standing and talking. Yeah, anybody. and it was a congested area. Like yeah. I said, there was so much wasted space, and then you had this narrow path between right. two rows of breweries, and then you had, like, Earn Your Booze had their fitness setup, which was in the center of it. So, right. like, you had this weird... She caused even more fucking congestion right there. Yeah. I don't know. And it was already a power corner because you had 8-bit over there. You had 12 West. You had BRI. Wilderness. You had Pueblo Wilderness. Vida. Well, yeah. Well, uh, I just mixed Wilderness and Pueblo Vida. <laughs> Wilderness. <laughs> That's our new brewery, guys. <laughs> uh, Scottsdale Beer Co. was right there. Right. It's like, it was just a huge concentration of popular breweries. And it's like... Yeah. No thanks. Then you have, like, Dark Sky with, like, all the kombucha and all that stuff, which was fine because they brought juice box which we asked them if that qualified them as kombucha <laughs> <laughs> um so we decided that we were going to ask people uh different questions this year uh and we tried to go with out of context questions well you know it's funny because we you know and we, we, we talk to people there about it it's like when you go to a beer festival and you just talk to people about what they brought and and stuff like that it's you know that's somewhat informational but i, I mean and a lot of these places, like you said, they're, they're doing kind of experimental stuff or they're doing special one-offs just for this festival, which is cool. But like, so like people that listen to, listen to the show, they're not going to be able to go to fucking Helton and yeah. get that beer, right? They don't have it. Or if they do, it's only going to be for like a week. So it's it's almost like, well, let's let's get some. Let's, let's get something that is not time sensitive. Right. Let's make a little can, bit. If you listen to this two weeks later, like you're not, well, why am I going to listen right. to about a beer festival? Because I didn't go. Right. It's next year. It's not going to be the same. So why am I caring what somebody brought? Well, it, it, to me, like listening to podcasts in general, for me, it's either I want to be informed about something or I want to be entertained. And if we can't give them information on stuff that's going to be helpful, we may as well fucking entertain some people yeah. and entertain ourselves doing it. Right. So and, I thought, and that's funny because at this point, I feel like we have such uh, a lot of good relationship with all these breweries and we have such, you know, camaraderie with a lot of them that we are able to ask these questions to them and it not be fucking out of left field right yeah they're <laughs> like what the if this is the first time we were talking to these people we asked these questions it would be a little weird but um no it was just awesome it was awesome to talk to these people and, and every time we see them uh at a festival like this it's it's great to be able to hang out and, and chill and drink some beers and uh you know laugh have some yucks yeah because i mean they're <laughs> one they're stressed out because it's a busy day they got a ton of shit to right. do but they still want to engage people like us and real media people yeah yeah other <laughs> other other real media people legitimate people <laughs> but like i hopefully we give them an opportunity to just like turn their brain off and just have fun for a minute right and then get back to the shit show that they got to deal with or that was so, the other thing too it got a little swampy in that building once everybody was in there dude so it's funny like if it was like we first got in it was super fucking warm in there like i was sweating like crazy and everybody else was too which i could see all the brewers sweating and then when they actually, I felt when the general mission got in, they cranked the AC even more. So it was like, it was cooler. So I wasn't sweating a bunch, but like you said, it was still muggy and swampy, which was really weird. So I don't know what the fuck they did, but it was yeah, like, I think with all that melting ice and all that beer, you know, and that's the other thing. It just <sighs> raised the humidity. So I think, I think we, we kind of uh, stumbled upon it earlier too, which was we tried to get water out of one of the coolers. It was just ice. It was just ice. <laughs> And so I think also that happened to some people's beer. Oh, yeah. A lot of frozen beer was going on. I, so. I heard yeah, I heard a bunch of people complain about frozen beer. So you're like, huh, okay. Well, compared to last year where people were complaining that they didn't, they didn't have enough ice. Yeah, because ice didn't come out till like five minutes before the event started. Right. The so it was like, oh, well, that's a big juxtapose, right? Between last year this year. <laughs> last year we didn't have ice. This year there's too much fucking ice, evidently. Plus, you would, things I like, mean, who knows? Maybe that was an unpredicted with all the fruited towers that were there right low, low abv and high fruit like maybe yeah it was the fruit froze and was just blocking kegs and stuff like that but uh, that's not enough it was delicious so. yeah i didn't there was nothing that got poured that i was like 
this was a bad cake or this was like nothing that I didn't like was the production process or the serving process. It was just personal preference. Like nothing was like, oh, look at this fucking sludge and or like this is under carb because what was it? Was it last year's Real Wild and Woody where we thought a lot of stuff was low carb or carbonation? Low carb. Yeah. And it's like some beers seemed like they were flat, but. No, low carb isn't, it didn't have enough carbs in it, right? Carbohydrates. That's what you're saying. (laughs) We all felt it had less carbohydrates than normal. Yeah. There wasn't enough sugar. And I'm sure there was plenty of sugar in some of these. That's too funny. All right. Well, uh, that being said, I guess we should uh, let you guys listen to all the uh, wonderful interviews we had with some awesome people on there. So uh, enjoy that. And, and hopefully uh, you catch the uh, fight commentary. Yeah, there was there was a little bit of a, uh, a scuffle a scuffle there. So and uh, there's definitely a sucker punch. And oh, yeah, that guy got sucker punch like hardcore. Like It was like right in front of us, too, which is crazy. Uh, at the time, we were, <laughs> we were interviewing uh, Matt from Matt. VR. So. He had to go. And play. He had to leave the interview to go play superhero, which is funny. He didn't even like. He didn't even like. Didn't say anything. He just like left. He just yeah. left and went fucking became referee. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. So, so. if you get to that point and hear some commotion, that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, go listen to that. Enjoy, and uh, we'll be back. All right, we're here. Real Wild and Woody hasn't started yet, and this might be the only good interview we have. And we are here at. 12 west in the little power corner would you call this yes um with sarah who better talk into the mic clearly because she scolded noel the last time (laughs) so introduce yourself hi i'm sarah ritchie with 12 west brewing i'm the sales and brand manager and we are in booth number one at real wild and witty with cuvee verdad sour project and 12 west beers and we've already tried them and they're amazing uh, I'd be um, so the burning question on my mind is: I saw the little teaser for the downtown Mesa thing, for the the space looked like it was kind of empty. Where what a uh, what's when when Sarah? We've been talking about this forever. Why are you asking me that? Because <laughs> I wanted. We'll, we'll talk later. We can talk later. Cool. It, it will be open in the next twelve months. Awesome. That's good enough for me. I'll take, <laughs> good enough. Good enough. I think, I think All we right. heard that Excellent. twelve months ago. Okay. <laughs> so our big question this year or this beer festival is what's your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? And if you need context for the question, we'll give it to you, but Lowbrow leisure activity? Oh, uh, God. Um, cross-stitching uh, curse words. Oh, that, that's perfect. That, I do a, I do a subversive cross-stitch, sassy cross-stitch. There's a lot of F-bombs in there. <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe we can have her do a lowbrow one for us. I love it. I love it. I probably so, could. So what did you guys bring today? What are the things? We we're drinking something right now, right? And what are you drinking? I'm drinking the Scarlet, which is mixed culture with black currant. Yes, the Scarlet is our draft Cuvée Verdad sour with black currants, and uh, we're drinking a yes, Sacrifices are. bourbon barrel aged imperial stout with vanilla and cinnamon. We also have just the vanilla variant, and it's 12% awesomeness. Pretty cool. So, um, so of these beers, people uh, that come here get to try these. Are there are these things you guys put out often enough for them to come get your brewery or are they like, kind of like a yearly special release or how special do people get releases sporadically. Okay. So um, just check the website, um, follow uh, 12 West on social media at 12 West Brewing. We also have a uh, text program that you can sign up for. So it's available on our website. So if you text the number to follow our text updates, we will um, put out blasts whenever we do special releases, whether it's can releases or special tappings. Very cool. Uh, well, thank you for chatting with us. We're super excited. And I know we're going to be opening soon, so cheers. Oh, wait, My pleasure. One more question. Oh, oh, one more oh, question. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, sorry. So this is Real Wild and Woody. Are you real, wild, or Woody? I am so real. She's so real. <laughs> we we should have probably saved this one for last. Thanks for coming think, in when you're sober. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think this is going to get better after this interview. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. All right. We're fortunate enough to not have to move for our next interview because 8-Bit Ale Works happens to be right next to 12 West. Wait, and I'm going to guess you guys are booth number two? Three, actually. Oh, oh where's, where's number two? They're number one and two. 12 West is. Oh, God damn Something that. like that. Yeah. <laughs> damn it. So we are here with? Uh, I am Christina Witten, one of the owners of 8-Bit Ale Works and also occasionally known as Mrs. 8-Bit or Player Two. I like Player Two. Player, always player two. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like to let Ryan think he's player <laughs> one, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Uh, so we're asking uh, kind of weird questions to start with. I love so, it. 
Um, man, what are, what's, a, what's a good question? What do you got there? We'll go with our other one. So if you need context, we'll give it to you. But what's your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? Lowbrow leisure activity. Oh, Video games don't count. I was going to say, I feel like I have a really obvious answer. <laughs> I should have known you wouldn't accept it. Um, let's see. Listen, listen we, we have some kind of standards, sort of. You do? No, no. no. <laughs> Hence the don't question. Don't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the question. Oh, my gosh. That is weirdly difficult. Like, I don't have time. Do you, do you need to, context for that? I don't have time to question? do anything anymore. Like, okay, I guess, I mean, if video games don't count and working 24-7 doesn't count. <laughs> Unless it's a really, like, underground video game. Like, you'd have to have a specific video game. Oh, man. Probably nothing I would consider lowbrow. I don't know. I, I mean, I mostly play, like, Overwatch and Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that. So, um, I run, I write, I scrapbook, and... Uh, I sit on my ass and watch a lot of TV. I, I, I write, would think that would fan count. Fiction? No, Damn it, but I, I tried once. I did try once, and I got like three paragraphs in and felt really awkward. So, <laughs> so yeah, that classifies. We'll go with that. We'll, we'll roll with that. I like it. <laughs> uh, so, what do you guys bring today that uh, people can try at your booth? So, we have two different versions of our Ryan's Recurring Insanity, which is our Goza. Uh, one has fruity pebbles in it. It's delicious, and then the other has Sanguinelli Blood Orange. Um, I also have two different versions of our Ichabod Crane's Nightmare. So that is our Chocolate Pumpkin Imperial Stout. Oh, man. Um, I have the 2015 Barrel Aged and the 2017 Barrel Aged, and both were aged in barrels that were originally from Whiskey Del Bach, but then we used to age our Mayan Chocolasis as well. So. so I don't see, like, 67 boxes of cereal. Did that almost kill Ryan last year doing that? Uh we only used like four boxes this time. We went real low key. I mean, you know, they we were, took it real easy. They were real big boxes, but they were only four. Yeah, they exactly. got they got the, exactly. they got the Costco please. version. Um, and then we also actually have our Hefzalai, which is a wheat wine. Um, very, very sweet, strong banana notes. And we've got that in a cask with coconut and cacao nibs. Ooh, that's perfect. That leads into my other question. Do you think coconut is underrated or overrated? Super underrated. I love coconut. I love coconut. Coconut and cinnamon are like my two favorite beer adjuncts right now, I think. Not necessarily together, although... C cinnamon or cassia bark? I mean, I I'm more accustomed to cinnamon. We like using the chunks. They okay. work really, really well, but I would be super open to cassia bark as well. Uh, I'll say this. I know last... Well, earlier this year, I think we had the... Was it like... A banana split beer that you guys had. Yes. Oh my god. We talked about that afterwards for like three episodes, I think. It was pretty amazing. So Oh, I'm thank so you. Glad. Thank you for that. Yes, thank awesome. you guys. Are you kidding? The, it's my favorite our mind, thing. Our mind was blown. I was like, I don't know how this tastes like banana splits. So we told like five people there to go try it. We, we kept sending people over. Well try our cask today. Okay. So um, I'm guessing the one that you tried was probably our secret level stout that we did with uh, casual point. Casual point, yep. Uh-huh. So that was our uh, chocolate stout that we used the um, same yeast in that we have in the Hef is a lie, our wheat wine. So that's strong banana character all came from the yeast and so we have another beer that's very similar just not dark awesome and we expect you to be one of the longer lines so we might just hang out here while it starts and be first i appreciate it that's not a bad plan i'm i'm so humbled every year at, at every festival really like i love being able to share what we do with people and so you know the more the merrier for sure and our last question is yes. since we are at real wild and woody Naturally. are you real wild or woody I feel like I can answer that a multitude of ways, depending on context. Um, we're, we're all about no context questions this year. You know what? Then I'm going to say Woody and just leave it at that and let people wonder what the fuck awesome. I mean. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll let you get back to your booth and good luck today. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. All right. We're here at Ren House at, I would say, probably the busiest booth today. Good today. Yeah, good There's a good chance of that. One minute. And we're here with uh, probably one of the best beer tenders, bartender. Do you like beer tender or bartender? Um, I'm good with either way, but I like. I mean, I do tend the bar and I do serve the beer. Oh, I do serve the beer, so. So either way. Either way. We're here with Hilda from Ren House, who is also Cena's favorite bartender, beer tender. It's just right here. So yeah. she's gonna <laughs> like this part. Um, what do you guys have that you're excited about? Here at Real Wild and Woody. Um, I'm really excited about the Frescas. It's always like a really big, you know, fan favorite. 
but the desert tropical with the mounds bar the mounds bars is really good um, that's probably my favorite but then we have a very unique one with the, the OJ that's just it's a point it's a point one percent dry hopped OJ that's just pretty much just we, that's all fermented orange juice <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that a lot of people will really be excited and intrigued with that uh, specific beer. So our, our main question that we're asking at this event is, what's your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? <laughs> um, you know what? Getting drunk with Tyler doesn't that count. That is pretty much all I do here. <laughs> That's all I'm looking forward to. <laughs> but uh, just hang, I actually I like just, just gather all the uh, stickers, as I always do that stickers and get all the little swag brewery swag we get i always end up walking out with a little goodie bag <laughs> and then stick them in precarious places and then yeah or or i'm sure i'll get another water bottle <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of water bottles a lot of water bottles that's how it works uh so i question so would you be okay with serving beers in edible glasses in what edible glasses like if it's oh you could, the, the patron could just eat it yeah. and then you don't have to worry about Clean that'd it up be, after. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it, that's environmentally friendly also, right? See, there you go. Are you saying, like, do a stout in, like, a chocolate cup? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's a good idea right Boom. there. Trademarked. Yeah, I mean, listen to this. We trademarked that. a cone and, like, a, like a dip, like, cone dip. Oh, a waffle cone yeah, dip? Oh, man. Chocolate, so you won't just soak everything through immediately. I think we're onto something here, guys. So, uh, if Drew's listening to this and you need, <laughs> if you need a collaboration partner for a chocolate <laughs> cup with a stout, we're your people. It's a true story. Uh, also, I saw on social media that you guys brought the most biggest uh, bottles of La Fresca's yeah, I've ever seen. We do. We don't have them here just yet. Luke's going to come back and uh, bring them, but we're, yeah. Everybody, Is that Luke guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we yeah. know. You know you know that Luke guy. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we met him before. <laughs> do you anticipate any problems trying to pour out of that bottle? Um, I just probably over pour. It gets, you know, it's a little hard with a really big bottle that you're just trying to pour at one ounce out. <laughs> that's where we're like, man, that's a great idea to have such big bottles, but at the same time, you have to lift that giant bottle 40 times. 40 times yeah, yeah, it's going to be a little, <laughs> a little tough. But so. it's fun. It gets a good, I mean, everybody really likes Magnum bottles. Oh, yeah. And everybody will line up for, you know, the time pour. And everybody, yeah, Fresco's always great. Very cool. And you said, you have, so yeah, everything's pretty much time pour for the most part? Yeah, we're doing time pours for the most part, but, uh, and then... We have a lot of beer, so we definitely won't run out like we have in the past. So awesome. Make people happy. Well, I think people are getting in, so we probably should let you get back to it. So thanks for talking to us. All right. Thank Good you. See you guys. All right, guys. We are here again with somebody. His name is Ryan Sadlin. Sandlin. Sand Sadlin? Sadlin. Saddle? Saddle? How do you say your last name, Ryan? Sandlin. Oh, just like it sounds. Yeah. Just like huh. Yeah. And spelled, I guess. Weird. Yeah. Uh so we happen to notice you pointed out to us there's a bunch of mayo on your booth over there. There is. They got me uh, the fancy ones as well. There's some Ooh. mayo chup, which is a blend of ketchup and mayo. So we should call that fancy sauce. From yeah. From, so. uh, and then there's some chipotle uh, mayonnaise over there. Very nice. And then they also got, you know, they, they had to get the normal stuff. And then they've got the upgraded. And then they've got the, the packets, packets to go, just to in go. case you yeah. want to get them on the run. You need to be portable when you're running you need some mayonnaise. Yeah, I mean, it's very very important. It's probably for your biking, I yeah. think, right? Uh, mountain biking, no, when you mountain no. bike? Yeah. Squeeze one in. No, not not okay with that. Oh. Yeah, that's the important question. Did you ride your bike down here to take advantage of the bike babysitting that they offered today? No, I did not. I did see that, and I thought that was the stupidest thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. Uh, we saw Nick earlier, uh, and then we shamed him into running up the stairs instead of using the escalator. Oh, nice. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Nick tried to take the escalator... Oh, weak. Yeah. yeah. That's what he said. Weak. So what uh, what you guys bring today? Uh, uh, we we brought besides yeah, the mayonnaise. Besides the mayonnaise, we've got uh, pog juice, which is a uh, kettle sour with uh, passion fruit and guava. We have deep blue, which is a uh, mixed fermentation sour with blueberries that we dry hopped with mosaic. Uh, that aged in barrels for a year. Uh, Juice box heroes. This one is blackberry cinnamon vanilla. Nice. Um, it's very thick, as the kids say. How many C's? Uh, I, I was go. I would go four with that one. Ooh, that's real yeah, thick. That's real thick. Wow. And then uh, we brought Pilsner. You know, because it's hot. Because yeah. it's hot as shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Speaking of which, what what possesses you guys to come down to Phoenix in July? I ask myself that every time we come here. It was. It hurts to be outside. <laughs> it does. It yeah. just hurts. Uh, so we had a question earlier about the uh, Juice Box Hero. Yep. What what is that? what is that? Uh, so it's a Berliner Weiss that we. Uh, we add just a fuck ton of puree to. 
All right. Well, no, we're saying, but it's like, what, 3%, 2%? Probably even less can, than that. Can, I mean, can we even count that as root beer then at this point? Can we? I mean, those guys have dry hopped orange juice. We just drink there, it. So. It's delicious, though. So. <laughs> I guess, I guess, yes. The question's yes. Yeah. I mean, it's somewhere. It started as beer. <laughs> yeah. They said it, they said there'd be a lot of kombucha here. I didn't know it'd be from Ren House and Dark Sky. Right. <laughs> oh, no. We're just the smoothie bar. <laughs> the smoothie bars. I love it. The dry hop smoothie. I'm in for yeah. it. I'm in. So our question uh, for the festival is, what's your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? And, he, and you know the connotation of this. Uh, yeah, we read you yeah. the email. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, I heard it. Ooh, lowbrow leisure activity. That's, I'm not drunk enough for this one yet. <laughs> what, what, what's, good to go, what's a good one you've gotten so far? Uh, Sarah said cross-stitching cuss words. Oh, nice. I yeah. like that. That's a good one. He does that too. Ryan does that too, guys. Don't worry. That's oh, actually, uh, uh, photoshopping Matt Trethway's face on stickers. Yeah, and that's placing perfect. Placing them all over the building. <laughs> I love it. Have you guys seen these yet? Yeah, I saw that though with the uh, the uh, what was it uh, the Nickelback? The Nickelback. Oh no! I didn't Look see at it. this photograph. It has Matt's Matt, face. Matt Trethway, owner of Beer Research Institute, is a huge Nickelback fan. That is. Listen, he owns a sports bar, the best sports yep. bar, I'm sorry, in Mesa, yep. and he loves Nickelback. Yep. I got to go to this place. Yeah. I got to check it out. See, and that would have been acceptable answers, too. Hanging out with 12 West and BRI would have been Ooh, yeah, low brow. Yeah, low brow for sure. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You do not want to be caught on camera with those guys. All right. And the, the last question is, are you real wild or woody? I got to go woody. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All day. Well, good luck to you and your crew at the festival, and I hope you don't melt between we'll the time fine. you go home. Can we get a, a, sh a cup of mayo to go, please? Uh, yeah, come Mark. on over. <laughs> yeah, mayo's free. We are here with... Oh, up. Should I turn it on? Okay, yeah. There you go. Turn it on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, She's Bol professional. <laughs> We're I know, not. I'm so I don't do well on these. Um, Alyssa Bolchek from Helton Brewing Company. Nice to meet you, Alyssa. You too, darling. <laughs> we haven't met ever. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. nice to meet you. Weird enough. Uh, so we are asking people today uh, some odd questions. Okay, I like that. So we figured that'd be the easiest way to go for it. All right, let's do it. Um, so are you real wild or Woody? Since we're at that festival right now, I'm Woody. Ah, that's that's so funny. <laughs> it's like, is that the common that's answer? That's the common one. It's so All funny. Right, that's yeah, boring. welcome to the club. Right. It's cool. Okay, cool. That's fine. It's very very that's cool. That's fine. I'll take it. <laughs> but I think the inflection <laughs> kind of differentiates the I know. answers. Yeah, it does. It does. So we go, are you real wild or Woody? I'm like if you do like that. You sound this? creepy when you. Huh? Oh yeah, you okay, fucking cool. cuss. We well, cuss all the fucking I'm time. I'm fucking real. Then I'll take that. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with that. Then be different. I love it. I love it. Uh, what other? That's weird questions too. What other questions do you have, Ed? I forget. Oh, what's your favorite uh, lowbrow leisure activity? My what? Lowbrow leisure activity. If you need context, we'll give it to you. But I we do. Prefer what the not. hell does that mean? Okay, so we got an email. Okay. For using the hashtag HCPC, which got is it. our a it. Also, a what would you call it? A healthcare provider or okay. some sort of healthcare right, organization right. uses that hashtag and told uh -huh. us to stop using it because it was a organization for healthcare professionals and their counsel is very important and blah blah blah. Respected. Well respected. Yeah, well respected counsel. Well, this beer podcast and, is very important too. Damn yeah, well, it! They like, told us, and uh, we don't want you to associate your lowbrow leisure activities with our oh wow okay so, i see so, i see yeah. okay so what is that okay. so our podcast is technically a lowbrow leisure activity so. all right i get it okay so nothing man i work i work a lot i have kids and that's I call it. kids I'm, a lowbrow I'm leisure activity as, yeah that's yeah, it I'm boring. That's I'm super it. Yeah. boring and besides beer i drink a lot of tequila so tequila is definitely low yeah, yeah. lime or no is. lime salt lime and salt no just straight out of the bottle yeah that's right definitely lowbrow right into your mouth <laughs> <laughs> keeping it fucking real See, that, and then there you go. Back to what you said. Back to what I said. You're there fucking you real. I would say children aren't lowbrow, but the things you have to clean up after children, yeah, it's yeah, probably really are, lowbrow. Yeah, maybe a little bit, yeah. So what, what did you guys bring today for people to try? So we, we brought four beers today. Uh, we brought um, pretty much all sours, sours and gozas. Uh, we brought an unfruited sour, our boysenberry sour. Now, this one that we brought is actually a batch that we've been aging since uh, 2018. So it's going to taste a little bit different than what's in our tap room. Um, we also brought a boys in blue and we took our blueberry Berliner Weiss, which we brought as well, and we mixed that with the boysenberry sour. Um, turned out really, really good. And then we also brought our pink guava goza, which is a collab that we did with Mother Road. Um, with that, we used pink Himalayan salt, the pink guava goza, and then the Czech sauce hops, which gives it a little spice at the end. Very nice. Yep, Damn. so all sours, all sours I'm and gozas. In. That's yep. awesome. Uh, so 
all the, of all those beers besides like, so people can come to Helton and actually try those most of the time or is it going to be something that you guys do occasionally or So the boysenberry sour was one that we had as a seasonal last year but it it you know the product sold so well so we made it kind of a flagship okay um we do have the boys in blue i think we'd have like a half a keg left of that so maybe in the next week or so if you go down there then you'll be able to get that uh pink guava we made a lot of that again with which is a collab with mother road so they have some up there at their tap room off of butler and we have it down here and then um the blueberry berliner i think we probably have two half barrels left so you got about maybe a couple more weeks on that one okay. and then, and then it's cool. out uh and i'm gonna say is cinnamon overrated or underrated in beer uh, over overrated. overrated. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, right. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Is that, where are these coming from? <laughs> All right. So my, I got okay. the. I got another one. It is um since you drink your tequila straight. Yes. If you drank tequila with Himalayan salt, would that make you a pretentious asshole? Yes. Absolutely correct. Absolutely yes. <laughs> correct. Absolutely. <laughs> if you cook with it, no. But you drink with it, yes. If you cook your fish on like the big salt slabs. That's just smart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, All I can't right. agree with that. All right. Well, you're starting to build a line, so we'll let you get back to whatever right. it is you're doing. Thanks, guys. Thanks, All right, Kevin. everybody. We're here with uh, Jordan from Goldwater. Howdy, y'all. How y'all doing? It, I'd like. It's nice to see you survived uh, fixing all your equipment when it was 118 and it oh, was yeah. a thousand degrees or a thousand percent humidity. So yeah. nice to see you again. <laughs> He's, yeah. Sorry, coffee. <laughs> He's got valley fever now, but <laughs> yeah. But I know, yeah, so yeah, so Glycol survived, Chiller survived, or yeah, Chiller Glycol survived, Boiler survived, Keg Washer survived, it was a hell of a week, but we made it, so that's all that matters. So I guess that's like a unsung kind of job requirement, right? Like you have to become an engineer pretty much instantaneously oh, yeah. when you join a brewery, right? I know, since I started working in this industry, I've learned, you know, the basics of plumbing, electrical work, and being a mechanic, boiler inspector, I mean, kind of, you learned a little bit to kind of keep yourself running. <laughs> And there's a bigger stuff that you're just like, this is over my pay grade. Just, we got to call someone else in. <laughs> like, you're like that guy, uh, was it with Adam Sandler? And like, he was just like smashes the side of the air conditioning unit. He's like, oh, let the kid look at it. And you just hit it a couple times and you go, yeah, it's fixed. And if not, you call somebody. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah if you get a little wax, a kick, you know. It's like, if it, yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Just run. We're fine. <laughs> it's good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Do, do you ever try the Fonz move where you just like elbow it or punch it and they're like, yeah, it starts I, running again. I do, but I don't know if I can classify it as a Fonz move because by that point, I'm, it's more so hitting it into anger. <laughs> oh, it's Where not a place our shirt. It's not out of coolness. It's just no. pure anger. I hope someone sees it and it hits it and it starts back up. It's like, oh yeah, totally meant to do that. That's on purpose. <laughs> so you guys have been killing it lately as far as the beers you've been putting out, and uh, looking at your list, you didn't uh, cut any corners coming to real wild and woody either i did not uh I, you know i love coming to these beer festivals i always like trying to bring our a game beers and just fun different stuff that we usually don't put out or stuff we save for these festivals so yeah definitely want to bring you know stuff to entice people to come over to our booth to try us out if they haven't before so the uh go go power rain sour sour rangers is it what it's sour yeah, rangers go go sour rangers sour rangers i don't want to, i don't want to get trademarked here by bandai they'll probably <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us in trouble. We'll see and do this. Uh, you know, were you guys just hanging out watching some anime and you decided that you're going to make that series? Or what was the thought I mean, behind that? Honestly, so we just kind of like, just actually, so this last, uh, the year before here, we're on what did we debuted our first Kettle Sour. And so we just kind of trying to think of like what would be a fun fruited sour series that we could do. And we're literally just sitting there one day, kind of shooting the shit, trying to figure out names for beers. It's about 75% of the job is really trying to figure out what to name a damn beer. But, but then we kind of came on like, you know, like Go Go Sour Rangers. And we thought about it. And like, that's fantastic because we can do every color of the ranger with every kind of different fruity beer it's just kind of like a you know, just popped up spur of the moment thing do you have anybody ask you asking you why you did power rangers and not voltron voltron's coming <laughs> uh-oh you heard it here first folks what was, the, what was that bad lady's name from power rangers i wasn't i didn't really watch it what was their name rita repulsa that's i don't know why i know that <laughs> are you, are you, yeah <laughs> that was right off the bat dude wow he knew it on, on cue uh, are you going to do one of those? Are you going to do is that on the series? Maybe. Uh, maybe Goldar. Maybe Goldar. Series. Goldar has to be uh, coming, right? Uh, see, that's Goldwater, the thing. Goldar. Goldar, yeah. See, that's like, you know, there's, it's kind of that nice thing. It's like the opportunities are endless. We're definitely, you yeah. know, working, trying to work through the Rangers. And then at the end game, a little, you know, into what's coming is Voltron's basically going to be like a mega fruited sour. Because, you know, it's like, you know, the mega machine. So, mega it's called a Megazord. Megazord. Sorry, Megazord. Wow. Whoa. Ed. All right, so I think I need to get a little more uh, information on the, Sour, uh, the Power Rangers. Otherwise, I'm just going to look bad now. <laughs> he did let Endgame slip. Is there an Infinity Gauntlet series coming? Oh, that's a oh. I caught that. I don't think anybody else did. Our listeners would have. Don't worry, Ed. 
So our big question this year, and uh, Dylan's pouring beer, so he can't uh, stop you from answering this one like he did the <laughs> last one. Um, what's your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? Well, favorite, what was it? Lowbrow leisure activity. Uh, favorite leisure activity? No, lowbrow. Oh, lowbrow. If you need context, we'll give it to you, but we prefer not to. I need context. <laughs> so we got an email from a healthcare organization. But it wasn't from them. It was somebody that liked them. Somebody associated with them or whatever. And uh, we use a hashtag HCPC, which is also the same hashtag they use. And they said that our lowbrow leisure activity, a.k.a. this podcast, should not be associated with the healthcare professionals council that <laughs> predominantly uses the hashtag. So that'll give you context. Oh, our okay. podcast is lowbrow leisure activity, according to them. And it's an English-based uh, <laughs> yeah, group. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's, I mean... So, like, Sarah from 12 West says she likes to cross-stitch uh, curse words. <laughs> <laughs> That's phenomenal. Oh, let's hear it. My favorite lowbrow leisure activity. I don't know. I got to think about this because I usually don't have a life outside this brewery, so. We've heard that a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's this? The guild might have to turn into a union for some of these brewers. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It's been, you know, busy, busy, busy. You know, summer fun times, shit breaking, all that good stuff. But low, favorite lowbrow leisure activity uh, honestly, I'd have to say, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm spacing here. I got to think. You're just a, you're just an all around classy, highbrow kind of guy, right? Is that, is that your answer? I mean, I like to think I'm a you know, classy guy, but you know. <laughs> so I got a question. So if you could only brew with three hops for the rest of your life, what would they be? Uh, uh mosaic have hands down for the first one after that i'd have to say probably i uh, found love with sabro that's probably one of my new favorite ones and then last one i think would have to be which i kind of fell in love with those uh summer hops for uh, australian summer hops okay. using a collaboration period we did a bottle shop and just gave off like great stone fruit and peachy flavors and i uh, really dug it very cool all right two questions left uh if Dylan had to choose between taking pictures and drinking beer. Which one do you think he'd pick? Oh, dude, that's that's hard. He does a lot both. He does both a lot of those. <laughs> and I usually got to clean up the mess afterwards. Just kidding. I mean, but um, yeah, how hard? Uh, clean <laughs> yeah, up a lot know, of cameras. Some glasses get left behind every so often. A lot, but you know, honestly, uh, he's Mr. Picture Man, hundred hands down. He loves his beer, but he's Picture Man for sure. And then the last question is: Are you real wild or Woody? I'm real. I'm the fucking OG man. I'm real as it gets. <laughs> What's yours, that brother? So Jordan, the high class, no lowbrow activity, r real man. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I wish I, I. I wish I had something. I'm really just blanking on the lowbrow activity right now. It's all right. Or maybe it's just too lowbrow that you don't want to bring it up. <laughs> or that could be it too. You in know? public. Yeah, you're not sure if the statute of limitations has run out yet, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm one of the first guys. So I got to see what other people say first. And then, you know, maybe if it, there's some you know, raunchier ones, I can slip mine in. <laughs> well, we'll save it for uh, next time. We'll have to come talk to you guys. Yeah. And, you, go, uh, you go always edit it in, right? We'll, we'll do a uh, Hobby Craftsman After Dark. That would be that. Uh, oh, God, yeah. I know you could do. Now, that would be a raunchy episode of Brewers. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, your line's getting pretty long. Yeah. Obviously, Dylan taking over for you didn't uh, work out. So we'll let you uh, go. Get back to it get things organized do we do i have to i'm just kidding <laughs> all right thanks of course, guys, thank you. it is now it's on it's on recording right now is this thing on yes welcome everybody to the hobby craftsman podcast <laughs> with, with us today is uh edward gomez yeah. my name is chris sandback and our special guest host is chase survivor <laughs> Welcome to the show. This is amazing. It's good to be here. I love it, guys. Love it. Yeah. This is great. Uh, so, Real Wild Woody, uh, 2019. Bright, to be here. Very bright, well lit festival. It is a very yeah. It's pretty crazy. Uh, walking around the festival, I think at this point, like like you guys definitely have one of the longest lines, along with a couple other of the big hitters in Arizona. It's pretty, yeah, pretty awesome. It's pretty nice. It's very cool to see that. Yeah. Exactly. I like it. It's good to come back year after year. You know, it's like, are we still cool? Are we? No, we are cool. Oh, like, we're that's cool. That's People, like People like us. People like us. Listen, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Yeah. Damn it. Do people like me? Oh, they do. They do. They like me. That's great. I love it. It's a very dated uh, reference, but good job. <laughs> people people, people know. People know. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, Chase, uh, we've been asking people, uh, since this is a real wide and woody, 
Are you are you real? Are you wild? Or are you Woody? Um, so we're mostly wild and Woody. Well, no, 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 no. Not the brewery. Personally. Personally. We're asking oh, about you, personally. Chase. People want to know about you, the person, the human being behind the beer that everybody loves. Ooh. I think I'm pretty real. Yeah, I think that's the one. I'm going to go with real. All right. What has been, like, the most popular answer so far? Woody. Woody? Woody? Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. You can imagine the context <laughs> that that's been Everybody giggles second. after they say Woody. I'm yeah, like, I'm Woody. Yeah, ha. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Woody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how I am. <laughs> He's better at giggling than I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, being so local base, yeah. do you feel like you have to be here, or is this something you enjoy doing for the connection with consumers? I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's important for us to be here. So, in that sense, yeah, I think it's we have to be here. Um, but then also just, like, the ability to connect with the consumer in our home state in Phoenix right now is bigger than ever. The, the need for it is bigger than ever. So yeah, it's we just almost lost our uh, sign. So yeah, yeah, a little bit of both. It is. So if you could only brew with three hops the rest of your life, what would they be? Oh man. I know that's a, that's a tough one. That's why I'm putting you in the, the hot. No, I think I think uh, Chase needs a little more in depth. If you could only brew with one strain oh. of yeast, what would it be? Oh, damn. That, that's a good call. Yeah, there you go. The one harvested from the yard outside of the brewery. <laughs> from all the brewer's beards. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's a beard. beard it wouldn't beard. necessarily be like a monoculture, but it would be a, you know. Yeah. Polyculture? Is that what they call it? I don't know. Yeah. Mixed ferment. Yeah. Mixed yeah. culture. It's Listen, that kind of thing. we like big words in this podcast. Mixes is not a very big word. I yeah. yeah. So that one. Yeah. The one that came off the dandelion in the front yard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do you guys plan ahead for this? Or are you, do this you bring, festival? yeah. Or do you bring so in new years, stuff? In years past, we've kind of just had beers that we typically would have out at the time or that we've released in the past. So we have an inventory of, um, for this year, we did something a little bit different and we actually brought two beers that we've never poured in state before. So that being the Carignan uh, Wild Saison Wine Beer Hybrid, and then the Sonoran Shipwreck, which is our collaboration with Undertow. So both of those beers are going to be released on our anniversary week, later in uh, like late August, early September. Okay. Um, so we brought those to kind of showcase here a little bit. They're still a little in their conditioning phase, um, but yeah, we thought it would be cool to just bring some beers that people haven't seen from us before and then you know, release them later on. We always have stuff conditioning that no one really knows about, you know, projects that maybe take three, four, five, six months in bottles and kegs to actually round out flavors. So it's just kind of like what happens to be ready around this time that will bring. And how do you guys balance, because you're basically national and I would assume worldwide at this point. Yeah. How do you balance out festivals? Because aren't you at two different festivals this weekend? Yeah, we're... We're all over the place all the time, to be honest with you. So it's really just splitting the staff in a way that makes sense. So a lot of the international travel will happen between, you know, John, Pat, or myself, mostly John and Pat. And then in-state or in the U.S., we'll kind of split things up where, you know, someone that has to stay close to home will do, you know, like a real wild and woody this weekend. Then Pat's on the road, so he'll just, like, pop over and do a festival, you know, on his way around the States. So it's really just kind of seeing what the lineup is and then just, you know, coordinating people to different areas all right so since you guys do a lot of citrus would you say uh blood orange is underrated or overrated as an adjunct i think it's underrated for sure i don't think enough people use it i think people like it when you use it. i just don't think enough people use it so that's what i mean by underrated it's just not i don't think it's seen enough it's a really cool fruit i do like it uh i was gonna say well we are our, yeah, I was going to say, so we have our uh, our question we've been asking everybody is, what is your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? We can give you context of the question, but we don't want to. <laughs> My favorite lowbrow leisure activity. Um, that's a really good question. Probably, I just go back to something drinking related seems so obvious but um just like you know crushing a couple 
KB beers. <laughs> are you secretly are you secretly drinking PBR in your yeah, basement? Yeah, just like having a good time, not thinking about beer and just you know, just drinking it. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's an interesting question. Do you? How do you distance yourself from judging other beers when you're just drinking socially? Yeah, you can. I don't know. So you're always evaluating. Yeah, exactly. Does that ruin beer for you? It can sometimes, but it's also interesting in the same regard. It's just like, it is, you know, my profession. So anytime I do have an opportunity to try something different or something at all, it's cool to evaluate it a little bit, even if it's just personally to myself. It's always, always market research. That's what, we, that's what yeah, we're doing. Exactly. We're doing, we're doing, this is a, was it, yeah, research, always researching. Tax write offs. Tax, yeah, there you go. So I know you can't speak for uh, Pat and John, but when are we getting a uh, wilderness festival? Maybe up in the woods somewhere? Yeah, or? We've been thinking about it for quite a few years now. Um, the main focus has been kind of like downtown Phoenix over the past like year, year and a half, but I'm hoping within the next year we'll see something. Another debated, exclusive. Yeah, we debated doing something this fall, but I think we're going to postpone it and you know just blow it up when it happens. That'd be awesome because you got a lot of friends you can yeah, call, exactly. right? Do something really special, like you know, invite a, pe- a lot of people that Arizona hasn't seen before. And, yeah. Yeah. So, last question: You've got you guys have done a lot of collabs. Who's the one collab that you, is the top of your wish list right now? Oh man. We still haven't technically done anything with like, you know, Canteon. Yes. I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be really cool. I mean, one of the cooler ones we've done recently has been Mars Brow. You know, their brewery's been around since the 1600s. Right, which is insane. So having, you know, Stefan come out from Bamberg, join us in Arizona, and then actually going to Bamberg and hanging out with him and brewing a beer there was what, a, what an awful job you had yeah no it was pretty special that's, so that's pretty amazing yeah going back to some of the, the like the more traditional producers you know i think obviously canteon is held in high regard with our brewery and a lot of other brewers so okay. yeah working with them would be sweet uh and the last question i have is how are your cats doing <laughs> are they doing well i own zero cats no they're doing really good <laughs> all right that's all i need to know that's all i just want to make sure no cats. <laughs> no cats. He says that every time, but I don't believe him. That's what I'm saying. That's cool. I might have a giant tattoo. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah. He has a tattoo on his back, but don't don't take my word for it. <laughs> take the picture's worth for it. All right. Chase, man, thanks for talking to us. Absolutely. My pleasure, guys. <laughs> All right, man. Well, cheers. Thank you. We are recording, by the way. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. oh. So, uh, we're in the uh, middle of Real Wild and Woody, and we ran into somebody who has a blatant cease and desist shirt on that's a good point why don't you introduce yourself you know it's not cease and desist if it's parody parody true uh, parody's covered weird (laughs) Weird. no what was your question uh introduce yourself oh my name is uh ryan i uh run a website backyardsuds.com you can buy cool homebrew t-shirts there and i kind of blatantly (laughs) deserve a cease and desist on most (laughs) of the stuff that i sell i accidentally kind of mimic popular culture right right i got i have uh, a shirt that says make mine homebrew which looks oddly enough like another one for a comic book uh something or other coincidence right total oh, coincidence, total coincidence. Yeah, absolutely. you know there's another one that says hb like it's kind of at an angle and looks like a bullet you know i mean what do you want so how did you get started doing this is this a business? Is this it's, a it's passion like, project? Or it's a what? passion project. It's not full business. I'm not living off of it. But uh, it's uh, I'm a home brewer. So I don't feel like there's a lot of homebrew merchandise out there beyond, you know, you know, I like New England IPAs and all that other kind of stupid stuff. No, it's just trying to celebrate home brewing and having a good time with it, you know. I don't want to say lifestyle brand, but it's it's a lifestyle brand. And I'm, you know, I, like the shirt I have on looks like the Budweiser logo. And uh, I have a minor league baseball hat. That I got my, the, my my Hillsboro Hops hat. The on. Hillsboro Here's Hops. The single A, short season single A for the Diamondbacks. So I, I can't complain. So it's a double hit right there for me. It's a beer hat, and I'm a Diamondbacks fan. I was gonna say, well, we get to ask the normal questions we ask everybody else. So, uh, this is the Real Wild and Woody Festival. Are you real wild or are you Woody? It depends on the time of the day you ask me, to be honest with you. You know, in the mornings it's a little more woody. 
<laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. And a little woody that time, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed with the beers here. You know, I went to America, uh, the Strong Beer Festival earlier this year, and I feel like the beer's a little bit stronger here. But I'm a, I'm, I've been impressed with a lot of the breweries. They're really swinging for the fences here, I'm not going to lie. So as a home brewer, what's your focus on style, as far as style goes? I try to have fun. You know, I, I've i been trying to, we, we were talking about the uh, Blood of the Unicorn. I've been trying to replicate that recipe, and I come close, but I never feel like I really hit it over the fence keep with the baseball metaphors and the hat and all that as I point to my hat on an audio podcast <laughs> but uh yeah I'm just trying to have fun I mixed different ingredients together I made a smash out of uh Vienna uh malt and strata hops and it was interesting my homebrew guy called it cat piss pale ale but it wasn't <laughs> really that bad it was actually really delicious so what's been your favorite brewery or beer at real the wild and woody so far I can't really pick a favorite beer. My favorite brewery is Mother Road, if you want to pick Arizona breweries, but I feel like my heart goes to every brewery here. We uh, used to live in Oakland, California. We'd always take, um, what's the name of that brewery over there? He's looking for help. He's looking for his wife for help. help. I apologize. It's like, help me, help me, I'm stuck. (laughs) Anyways, we used to take, they made some wild sour beers. I think we met over there. I'm not sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Crooked Tooth? Which one? Crooked Tooth? No, no, no. Dark Sky. No, no, no. Oh, but man, they, used right to can, they used to can these wild sour beers over oh, by... Yeah. Over in, in Oakland. Oakland? Yeah, so we would walk around Lake Merritt drinking those beers, walking our kid around and having a good time, you know? So how does Arizona craft beer compare to California? I'm not going to lie, I think there's some work to do with a lot of the craft beers. Uh, Arizona Wilderness is, is uh, talking out, knocking it out of the park a little bit, and uh, I think they, that a lot of these breweries have their training wheels, but I mean, they're they're doing a hell of a job. I'm not disappointed with a lot of the beers. Mother Road is one of my favorites. That uh, Their IPA Mother uh, Power Station is really good. I like that. But, uh, you know, I lived in Long Island before this, and it was all those hazy beers. I'm not a big fan of hazy beers. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but <laughs> I just, I don't want to have this thick film on my tongue while I'm drinking a beer or, you know, what do you want, you know? So as a home brewer, if you could collab with anybody in Arizona, who would it be? Anybody in Arizona? Oh, man, I don't know. If it's in Phoenix, I'll go with uh, our good friends at Arizona Wilderness, of course. Uh, and Flagstaff, honestly, I would go with Dark Sky. They seem to be doing a lot of really wacky and interesting beers that I can appreciate because that's kind of how I brew myself, you know? So you want to ask him the hop question? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, so if you can only brew with uh, three hops the rest of your life, what would they be? I'd just go with the sea hops, man. You know, I like the Columbus hop. I like the Cascade as a nice base. And Centennial is a good universal hop, you know? Like, old school, old school. Old school That's man. old school right there, man. You know? You can, you can make additions. You're going to add stuff. You're going to add fruit. You can change it up. But that, is, that as a base is traditional, and you can branch off in any direction and make a solid beer, whether you're an expert brewer or a new home brewer. Hi, I'm Whitney. I'm his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am proof that you can marry the bartender. I met her at 21st Amendment in San Francisco. Oh, that's not a bad place to find it. No, no, no. Yeah. You know? Well, thanks for talking to us. Well, I like you I like your shirt. So uh, we actually try and produce a C and D line of we've done Old English and we've done hams. So nice. yeah, I love the ham sticker, man. I'm gonna <laughs> put that front and forward on my beer fish. That's for sure. <laughs> so where can people find your stuff? Uh, backyardsuds.com, which will give you a link to my big cartel store, which is backyardsuds.bigcartel.com. So are you uh, are you looking forward to a C and D in the future? Is that so you can I, mount that on the wall? That's kind of a personal question. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but uh, let's be honest. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us and oh, enjoy you, real wild and witty. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'll Cheers. Definitely, uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, we are now. All right. <laughs> Listen, Matt, we brought an A game this time. Yeah. We have, we have our you, questions. I'm at the end of the festival. What you got? <laughs> All right, so it, it's become a tradition that we talk to uh, Matt Trethway at a beer festival. So obviously we caught him at the end this time. Thanks for and that. And we'll see 
we'll see the uh, shenanigans that happen. So, Matt, what did you take away from this festival, Real Wild and Woody? What's your takeaway? Was it good? Was it bad? Oh, was the uh, customer engagement oh, good? Solid festival. I think that this was a good one. It seemed like it was very um, paced. Uh, seemed like there was maybe a little less uh, attendance this year, which made it really nice and smooth. Uh, I think the setup's solid. Uh, this this event gets better and better every year, and I think it's just we're growing through history and through repetition. We're learning more from the guild, from the breweries. We all know what to do now. It's not it's not a rookie year anymore, right? So I think that like everybody's just bringing their A game, uh, bringing the beers that they know are going to be bangers, and um, I, I you know attendance is solid, layout solid. I, I I think it just works smooth and and flawless this year. Seems super smooth. Were you a little nervous being away from your uh, buddies at 12 West and Gold, and uh, Grand Canyon? Well, first of all, I'm ne I'm never nervous. I've never been nervous in my life. Um, I we we always like hanging out with those guys and we like being as close to them as possible at these events. Um, but that's more about synergy, right? Like we want to be close to those guys because we all get the same thing. We're all in the same circle. Uh, we're a tribe, like no question. So I mean, there, there's a circle of homies there that we want to play with. Um, what's cool about this setup is that it actually kind of forces us to break out of our booth and walk around and like cover more ground. So that's cool too. But those are our dudes. It doesn't matter where the fuck they're at, dude. We're gonna go find them. So I guess the biggest question is, how do you maintain like a customer engagement versus a high volume event? Like how do you engage a customer when you're trying to churn so many people through the line? Yeah. Like so what's your strategy? Our strategy is to have a lot of people on deck. So I'm always at these events and then I always have at least two people work in the booth. Plus I have at least one more of my partners at the event with me. So whether that's Greg or Brandon or, or whoever it is, there's always at least two partners and at least two employees. So there's four people on deck at any one point in time. If things start to get stacked, we can start breaking through that line quick. Um, so I, I think that's the strategy. Um, Bring, bring the beers that you know are going to move well and, and be well received. Bring enough people to handle it uh, to where if you need three people pouring beers to keep them oh. moving, then you keep them going. We got a fight. Right. We got a fight going on. Oh. oh. Matt's, Matt's going to go jump in. Matt's going to go settle this shit. We had a fight. We have broken phones. We have broken vape pen. Vape pen has been broken. The shit has hit the fan at Real Wild and Woody this year. And Matt Trethaway, Chris is going to jump in. So, wow. So, let me, let me tell you what. So, uh, of all the years that I've been here, I've yet to see, uh, I actually physical altercation at Real Wild and Woody. But you know, here's the deal, is that you put a bunch of beer in front of people, people are drinking a lot of things, uh, tensions are high, that's how it works, man, but not cool. Listen, it's a, uh, listen, I mean, people are here to have fun, right? You, yeah. Why, why, why fucking bother this shit? Getting crazy. We're, so. com we're commenting on the fight that just happened. On our podcast. Yeah, exactly. Always. But those listening. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping to throw a knee. I don't, I don't know. All right. Know. Matt's so back after uh, laying down the law, and we had a little bit of an altercation there. So uh, here's the thing, folks. Go to a beer festival. People will be intoxicated, and they will act a fool. Seen it. Yeah, seen it. Yeah, weird. So I guess up? that's What's a good. Up, boys? No, that's a good question. At what point are you trying to engage the customer versus you're trying to maintain your brand? My favorite time to engage a customer is at my brewery, not at a beer festival. So what's the goal for you at a beer festival? 
to work about 30 minutes, maybe 45, <laughs> and then get the fuck out of the tent. Because after about the first hour, people turn into a shit show. It, it, it just is what it is. So if you're listening out there on the internet, on TV, uh, on, on the radio, wherever the fuck this goes, uh, if you are at my booth after an hour after the festival starts, I do not want to deal with you. I will serve you a beer. Just don't talk to me. Get your beer and move on. Everybody that goes to a beer festival after the first hour turns into an absolute shit show. And that's not everybody, I know that, but the majority of people, it gets rough. It gets really rough. People don't think anymore, and they just start, I don't know. Everybody turns into a They're dick, man. They're just trying to get the bras. They're trying they, to get their drums. What's your trying. biggest beer? Yeah. What's your strongest beer? And and it just, it's, I'm, I love festivals. It's good for the brand, for exposure, for the whole community. Um, but that, what's your strongest beer an hour in? I'm over it. So what's your advice for somebody during the second half of a beer festival? Go home. <laughs> uh, my, my advice for people that work it is be extremely patient. Be calm, be relaxed, steer people because you have to steer them and direct them. Uh, for consumers, I'd say, man, drink more water than you think you need to. Pace yourself. Always be on the buddy system. Always have somebody with you that can kind of help corral you. Um, but you don't drink enough water. You drink too much beer. Pace it. It's it's not a fucking sprint. It's a marathon, right? So just pace it. Um, there is more beer to drink tonight and tomorrow. You do not need to crash all 40 tickets yeah. In an hour and a half, you don't have to do that. And if you are the guy that's doing that, we see you coming at the back of the line. We see you. Um, just pace it, man. Have fun. Like make it be, make it be a good experience. Don't try to just crush beer. It's, I don't know, man. It's, it ain't 1996 anymore. So we have we have two questions left. Uh. So yeah, hey, listen. Yeah. They're super, they're super professional, man, so you're going to love this. Yeah. Love this shit. We, we, we prepared for you. We don't yeah. give a shit about anybody else, but it's like <laughs> we have to prepare for Bat Trethway. All right. All right. He's going to call us out on our shit. It. Let me have it. So are we going to talk about those shiny-ass new shoes you got? Oh, yeah. They're okay. not new. All right. They've been they're to, Ger they've they're been to Germany, All right. Ireland. Um, as far as real, wild, or woody, what are you? Are you real? I'm, I'm, Are you wild? Are you Woody? I'm real, motherfucker. You know that. Not I'm the, real, motherfucker. So the last question is. No, no, no hold on. I, gotta, I, gotta, I have one more question. Ed has a question. So if you had to retire in some place, would it be Traverse City, Michigan, or Houghton Lake, Michigan? Oh, if I had to retire and like never work again, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and those are my only two yeah, options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only two options: Traverse City. It's gorgeous. You got Lake Michigan instead of a small inland lake for sure. Yeah. Uh, Cherries, uh, uh, and and you're surrounded by a couple of really dope uh, Northern Michigan breweries, uh, Shorts being one of them. Yeah. So in Houghton Lake, you, you don't have any of that, and you got a small Podak uh, ass town that I grew up in that I don't ever want to <laughs> live in ever again. I mean, it's beautiful, but I would never want to live there ever again. Traverse City, yeah, done. yeah, yeah. yeah all, right, done. all right, hands down, done. hands down. Yeah. All right. Well, Rob's on the the big mic, so we'll pause for a second. Pause. Right, we're good. Pause. So, <laughs> no, we're not good. We're closed. Final call, everybody. So, as we end this festival and we end this podcast, uh, Matt, what is your favorite lowbrow leisure activity? If you need context for this question, I will give it to you, but I would rather not. No. My my favorite lowbrow leisure activity, hands down, is camping. I, I like. I, I think that's super super easy. Oh. Super, super easy, uh, very low key, um, solid, right? If we're talking about like that's where I would, if I'm not working and we're out doing shit, I would rather be with my wife, my dogs, maybe a couple homies out camping, no question about it. If we're talking about just like bullshit in the backyard, dude, I want to be throwing bags and drinking a beer. Throwing bags, and drinking beer might be the best lowbrow leisure activity that there is. But also when so. I go camping. We bring our cornhole set, and I throw bags. <laughs> and we're throwing and bags. He throws bags. He throws fire. He throws bags. He throws axes. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Matt Trethaway. 
Go to the Beer, beer Research Institute. Ba, 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 Also, we're going to go to the Beer Research Institute for the after party, unofficial after party, right? That's what's about? Yes, sir. It's the unofficial, official. Oh, there we go. Real one Woody after party. I need you East to Valley say it, not edition. me. Yeah, yeah Matt's the only one who can say it properly, yeah, so. Cool. Well, and and uh, I'm, not legally, uh, I'm not legally allowed to say that, but, uh, you know. Who, who cares? Anyways, yeah. So. All right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. We're toasting mics. Thanks, Toast Matt. Mics. And we're back. You're back. We didn't go anywhere. We're, yeah, no, we're still here. We went and got another beer, though. Yeah, we Chris did. Chris brought out uh, a collaboration between Burial and Other Half. Yeah, so this last. Appropriately named, I think we should go home. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good beer. Which, if you listen to the the fight audio, we probably should have gone home before then. <laughs> that guy should have went home before yeah, then. He should have went way home before then. Oh shit! But yeah, no, it, it's so. I was just in Asheville real quickly. It was Ash, basically in Asheville, and this is definitely Barrel is one of the places I would have wanted to go. They have super cool. Like they're just their premise is awesome. They have great. Uh, Graphics like the graphics and the cans are awesome. Oh, yeah, their artwork's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. And so, it's definitely one of the places I wanted to when I was there, and I didn't have a ton of time. So, you know, I basically sent the family to the park, and then I was like, I'm going to burial. So, I walked over there, um, had a sour, which is really good. And then basically, this was the second beer I had, and I didn't want to try any more of the other beers, just I want to come on and drink this one. And then, luckily, the bartender was like, Well, we have cans up to go too. And I was like, Yes, I bought two, uh, four packs 16 ounce cans to go uh i think three of them made it back i think i drank like a f- the rest of them that night <laughs> so definitely wanted to share it with uh you know with you and and uh, some other people so uh what do you think of it it's pretty good huh yeah it's really good like it's really soft and i mean the color it's all yeah that's it has like a white yeah it's super into it it's so hazy like yeah. it's an interesting color it was just super dank. That was the thing too. Like when I smell, I was like, "Oh, this is kind of yeah." Nice. It's got that that n- n- nice dank, not that bitterness where right. it's like either over hopped or sometimes it's kind of green. But right, it's yeah. really good. Uh, Eight point two percent. It is the size of it. Actually, says double dry hop with excessive orders of choice Citra, unnecessary size of Galaxy and Nelson, and a wasteful shot of Simcoe and Columbus Cryo. That seems like one too many hops in there. <laughs> so it's a lot. Um, but yeah, no, I said, I, I dug this beer. I was super excited. I was actually kind of mad that I only bought two, four packs. I should have bought more. I should have loaded my suitcase up with this shit. And then <laughs> I don't need back. clothes. I'll just buy new ones. <laughs> well, I, uh, ideally enough, since I knew I was going to Asheville, I also packed really light. I think it was actually like 25 pounds, my suitcase. <laughs> so I was like, I have 25 pounds worth of beer. I can put in there. Didn't bring that back. I should have, but, but yeah, no, thought it was a, a tasty choice beer. So we could drink it. Yes. So I guess we cleared up Real Wild and Woody for this year. Are you excited for next year? Are you getting a little Yeah, you know, festival it's, fatigue? You know, it's funny. So Strong Beer Fest is, is I mean, going to be here before we know it, which is going to be crazy. Um, I like kind of look forward to that every year because it's outdoors and we get to walk around and, and check stuff out and there's a lot more things going on. Um, this last year, like the weather was awesome. If we could stay something like that, it'd be great. There's definitely been years, though, that it's been hot as balls and there's other years that's been fucking it was like downpouring rain so you kind of don't really know what to expect from that festival um i'm actually i, I really feel like we should get to one of the festivals like the made in the shade something up in the cool area in the flagstaff because what's the one in tucson the baja beer fest baja beer fest which is yeah down there well, it might be fun too but i don't know how and isn't that cool. barrel barrel one coming up what's that barrel brews and Oh. We talked to Rob about it. I don't think it was in the show, but it that yeah that has wine and that has right yeah and then we went too. just I mean you know I think at this point I've definitely Roll on Woody and the Strong Beer Fest the two I've gone to the most and yeah I mean kind of branch it a little bit and try some other festivals out and check them out It'd be kind of fun. Speaking you know. of which, did you try any of the craft spirits that were there? Because um, Santan, I think that's all they were pouring. It looked like. That's what it looked like, yeah. Grand Canyon had their little Spirit bar stand. with uh, Tiki Dan doing those mixed drinks. Um, I didn't have, no, I didn't really do the spirits. I didn't do any of that stuff. Um, no kombucha, no, no cider. No kombucha, no cider. Uh, I was bummed that cider core wasn't there. Yeah, that was, I was just, when we talked about before, like, 
people we noticed that weren't there, like Oro wasn't there, Cybercore wasn't there, because yeah. I always make my joke of how they're farther apart at the yeah. festivals than they are in real life. They definitely weren't. They were not this year. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I go to a beer festival and try beer. I mean, it's cool that they're there, and I probably would have tried some cider and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I don't. it's not something I seek out. So, so it seems, and there was an announcement, and we'll probably end on this because we've probably gone too long. Um, there was an announcement, and thank God, remember the guy last year making the announcements who was mm-hmm. on the microphone every three seconds? Wow. Thank yes. God they got rid of that guy. Yeah, no shit. Because <laughs> there was only like one or two announcements, and it wasn't blaring loud. Um, but they said there was like a record number already for VIP. VIP. Yep. So I'm wondering, like, would you be more interested in like two three hour sessions possibly i mean from that like one to three and then three to six because that be, that's kind of what it felt like a little bit yeah i mean it almost should have been that way right i mean it could have been see the, the problem with that is it's, i mean i guess from a, a brie it's a logistic nightmare to right. get people out of there and then get more people in and at the same time get the brewers a chance to relax for a minute and kind of reset but at the same time like you know if you're a brewer do you do the exact same thing. You bring two kegs of everything, so that way you can just do that. So you technically have less beer for everybody to try. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not hard for them too. So I don't know. I personally, I still want a fucking small, more intimate, fucking like juicy brewers. We went to like something like that. And I know juicy brewers wasn't supposed to be that way. I know they what they wanted to be bought bigger than that. Um, but the way that was, in, when it, way it turned out, was so much better than yeah. You know, something I want. I, I would like, rather than have a very low ticket count and or have more exclusive beers like these are beers you only get at this festival so i don't know that's just me that's the fanboy in me <laughs> the exclusive <laughs> the exclusive beer nerd wanting that kind of shit so yeah. yeah i knew there was a reason why you didn't want fundamental observation <laughs> it's everywhere i don't want it it's not cool anymore no nah, i just didn't <laughs> and i want to pay the premium fucking markup that uh there wasn't the bottle so yeah yeah I'll just drink some of yours when you hook and share it with me. Yeah, I figure you're like, I'll just I'll just wait him out. <laughs> exactly. Wait him out till he gets bored and lonely, and then he'll bring a bottle over. Yeah. Yeah. Cena's not drinking that with you. So. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, I guess thanks for uh, listening to this episode of the uh, Hobby Craftsman and uh, our recap of the uh, Real Wild and Woody Festival and our interviews. Uh, and thanks to uh, Rob and the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild for sitting down with us before the event and getting us media passes. Super cool. So we felt kind of special. Yeah, you know, I always feel kind of special, but even well, more, even more. You're very special. <laughs> even more on Saturday. It was really nice. Um, Ed, who are the raddest fucking people in the world? I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. You should probably, you should probably pull that up. Yeah, we're going to have to cut this. Oh, man. Where am I looking at? Mail. Ma- <laughs> that guy. Google Docs. I hope you cut this because I'm gonna sound like an idiot. Just, I mean, you normally sound like an idiot, so it's still <laughs> okay. At the bottom. All right, got it. Should I still say Rob's one year anniversary? Because that's the last update I got. No. <laughs> so we just going from straight Patreon supporters? Yes. All right. Do the. There we go. Our uh, Patreon supporters who help us go to events like this and do cool things. Uh, Zach Dominguez, Jessica Langley, who we ran into at Real Wild and Woody. Which it was so fucking loud next to that DJ when we met yeah, them. Yeah, couldn't even talk to I her. I couldn't even talk to her, so I felt so bad. But thank you for stopping by and saying hi, <laughs> Jessica. It's good seeing you. Paul Frappuccino. Yep. That's this week's uh, enunciation of his name. Nice. Uh, the Indie Beer Show, Cena Gomez, Rob Fulmer, who looked like a hobo at Real Wild and Woody. Incognito. And, yeah, He's incognito. He, he incognito like mode for Rob. Uh, Mark Bellosteros, uh, RIP Mark's Brothers drink tickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he lost him the first 10 minutes of the beer festival yesterday. And Sorry. Anthony Bracamonte. Cool, guys. If you want to uh, support the show and, and you know keep listening to episodes we're doing, uh, please go support. You know, Basically, if you can, go to uh, was it patreon.com slash hoppycraftsman. Support us there. We have a bunch of good tiers. Uh, if you can't do that, please leave us a review. I mean, it's, it goes a long way, too. So iTunes, uh, leave us a review there with some comments. Um, those yeah. kind of things basically happen. And other places that actually pull rankings, pull them from iTunes a lot of times. So be super helpful. Yeah, join Patreon. Maybe one day you'll be our guest at a beer festival. Right. 
and then we'll ditch you. Here you go. So you don't embarrass us, or uh, we don't embarrass you. Well, and that being said, so in, in the past, what we've done, too, is when we've gotten giveaways for uh, festivals or for other contests, uh, patron supporters automatically get entered into every one of the contests that we have. So if we're doing something like that, they instantly get one entry no matter what. So if you become a Patreon supporter, you can actually get a free entry to the contest we do, which is kind of cool. So you can win free tickets to Strong Beer Fest or hopefully uh, Real Wild and Woody or some of these other festivals they have going on as well. So um, if people want to find us on social media, Ed, where should they look at? They should go to the Hoppy Craftsman on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, the Twitter. The Twitter. Which one's dying, do you think? Facebook? I think Facebook's about to die. I, I feel like, well, I feel like Facebook's, yeah, it's fucking Because a lot of people are just like, this is bullshit. Like, yeah. It's a glorified calendar now, because a lot of people still use Facebook for invites, but I don't see a lot of people posting on it anymore, so. Yeah, it's pretty pretty sad. I would say Instagram's probably our best contact point, if you yep. want to follow us or contact us, like, a direct message on Instagram is better than an email. Yep. So if you have all your complaints, please address them to Chris. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, please do. He will get right on top of those. Um, awesome. And at hobbycraftsman.beer. Which is a great website. So go check it out. Yeah. Uh, this episode will be up on there as long as other episodes. Uh, and it'll actually point to our Threadless store, which has a bunch of our merchandise. So go there and uh, check out what we have. And uh, it's, we pretty much, Threadless is amazing. They actually do, um, occasionally they'll do free shipping. They'll give coupon codes out to people and we'll actually share those with everybody. Um, that are either following us on the you know social media or actually uh you know a Patreon supporter as well. So check that out. Further stores got some amazing things. They actually have tons of cool merchandise. You can pretty much put any one of the logos we have up there on countless things like hoodies and t-shirts and underwear. Yeah, I, I, not yet, but I'm, I'm guessing every time they keep adding more and more and more different products, you can do stuff too. So you cross like, your fingers. Like, underwear, underwear, they, underwear. they actually have shoes. I'm still working on designs for shoes. We have Hoppy Craftsman shoes, so that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, but all right. Are they Crocs? Yeah, no. No, they're not Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, as always, I'm Chris. I'm Eddie. Drink local, guys. Bye.